You know, a major question I see between both artists and competitive vapors alike is, Bobby, how do I make fat clouds? And I'm here to show you just how to do that today. <laughs> and the tools I'm gonna be using today are ArtStudio Pro on the iPad Pro, but you can do this in almost any art app. It doesn't really require you to use ArtStudio Pro. That's just my app of choice. I'm also gonna be using this picture of a cloud. Now you may be asking me, Bobby is using a picture of a cloud, uh, like using the colors from it, directly cheating. Um, and the answer is yes. And I'm also going to be using two default brushes inside of ArtStudio Pro, the Soft Brush and the Borodante Air. And that's it. That's all you need for this tutorial, two brushes, and a picture, and you're pretty much good to go. So now I'm going to open ArtStudio Pro and I'm immediately gonna go to my color picker, the thing in the top right that looks like a color picker. Yeah, it's that, that's the color picker. I need you to open that. And in the bottom section, there's the section, I think it's third to last. It looks like a bunch of little squares. That's where the swatches are. I need you to click on that. And the three little dots on the top of the swatch panel, you click on that and there's a section that says new from photos. I need you to click on that as well. And when you click on that, there should be a dialogue that opens up, lets you import directly from your photo library, the photo that I mentioned earlier of that cloud. Click on that, open it, and then you'll be prompted with a screen that lets you pick between five, eight, I have notes. <laughs> 16 or 24 colors. I usually pick the eight because it just seems like enough, I guess. Next, I'm gonna need you to go to your top panel or in your tools menu, wherever you can find the gradient tool. I think it comes default on the top bar, but if it's not there, it should be under your tools menu. A dialog will pop up on the left-hand side once you click on the gradient tool where you can select a color on the top and on the bottom. All you have to do is click that little square in the top and bottom. I need you to pick one of the darker blue colors when you have the, you know, when you're looking at the picture, you can kind of see like what the background looks like. You can see a dark blue near the top and a lighter blue near the bottom for the background. Pick a dark blue that's close to that, sort of like what I did in the video and do the opposite for the bottom, pick a lighter blue. And you drag that little line across the screen and you got a nice little gradient. And once you've done that, just make a new layer. And once you've made that new layer, you go and click on the lasso tool and now you just draw a sick cloud. And once you've done that, leave those little ants marching along as you click on your brush menu right next to the color picker and go to the airbrush section. Once you've done that, just click on the brush that says soft airbrush. I believe it's on the top, the first brush, soft airbrush. And then from your swatches, you pick the lighter gray, not super bright, not super dark, right there in the middle, uh, as you can see how I've done it in the video. And you fill that color in, that cloud shape, uh, completely solid. And until you're left with just a nice little silhouette of something that resembles a cloud. And after you've made that initial cloud layer, I'm gonna need you to make a new layer and in that new layer, click on the layer icon again, and there should be a menu that pops up where you can click on a button called Clipping Mask. I'm gonna need you to go ahead and do that. And what a Clipping Mask does is, while you still have a new layer above your current layer, it won't let you affect any of the pixels outside of the layer beneath it. So it's really useful for things such as this, where you don't really wanna like affect the entire canvas, you just wanna affect the pixels that are underneath uh, on that cloud layer. So that's perfect for this scenario. And we're gonna be doing these a lot, so get used to making clipping masks, so just, you know, heads up. And then I'm gonna need you to go ahead and go back into your swatches and pick a slightly darker blue now, kind of like what I'm doing. And not too dark, not super dark, but dark enough to sort of match the photo. Once again, you're picking colors directly from the photo, so it should be easy to match them up with what you're looking at, uh, but it's a great practice for making fat clouds. And I also went back and added a bit of brightness to that underneath layer. I felt I made it a little too dark initially, uh, but you can just do this depending on your taste, but I just made that a little bit brighter for a little bit more of a highlight effect. And then I also made a layer between my two original clipping masks to imitate that little banding of blue you see in the photograph. This happens in nature all the time when you look at like colors gradating, you can kind of see this area of like more saturation. I'm not sure what it's called because I'm, uh, uh, I ain't the smartest pickle in the jar. But yeah, you get that little area of saturation and it looks really nice and natural. So adding that is pretty cool in my opinion. And by now you should have something that sort of resembles almost like an early, like lower poly, like early Pixar type cloud. So if you're cool with something like this and this is the goal you were going for, you could just kind of stop here. This is, this is a basic cloud, but when you zoom out, it still has that nice like 3D effect. It gradates, it has, it has a nice roundness to it. And 
it's 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 fat enough but we could definitely go fatter and danker with this cloud so we're going to be doing that but if you're happy with how this cloud looks right now with its basic shading you can stop here and it'll look just fine but if you want to continue on here we go add another clipping mask on top of all the other ones and now i'm going to need you to go to your color picker not the swatches click on the bottom left of where the swatches are go back to your regular color picker and pick almost white not not perfectly right up in the top left corner white but just like almost white so you're not quite you know like clipping to the super high dynamic range highlight you're just like right about there so you're still keeping it you know not ridiculous and this is going to be your main highlight so be sparing with it but it's a nice effect to add just a bit of punch to your cloud and i also took that highlight color and added a bit of rim light onto the bottom of the cloud to give it a bit more of a rounding effect and to be uh you know, a little more fancy with it, so. And I also went back and made the shadows slightly darker, but that's completely up to you, depending on your taste. I just wanted to make those shadows a little darker, but but it doesn't really matter in terms of completing the tutorial or making it look like a cloud. I just wanted a little bit more darkness in the middle. And now we're gonna get into one of my favorite aspects of being an artist. <sighs> Layer, Layer management. management. So now I'm gonna need you to select all of those layers that you just made to create the cloud, not the background, but just the layers that created the cloud. Select all those by swiping right really far on each of the layers in Art Studio. There's also a select button on the top. It looks like an S, you can click on it and just manually select, but I prefer just to slide to the right. That works the quickest for me. And now with all of your layers selected, click on the little plus icon with the square around it in the bottom of your layers panel. And there should be an option that says group selected layers. I'm gonna need you to go ahead and click that. And once you've grouped those layers, I'm gonna need you to go ahead and and click that button again, the plus sign with the square around it, and now I need you to duplicate that group. And with the second group that you've just duplicated, I need you to go ahead, click the down arrow in the bottom of the layers panel and click merge group. And once you've done that, just go ahead and deselect the previous group layer just so you can't see it anymore. You just need to see the group that you've just merged. Now go into your brush panel and go to the digital painting section and find the brush called Borodante Air. It's a default brush that comes with Art Studio, and it's one of my favorite brushes for painting things like this. So find that, click on it, you're gonna love it. And now it's time to show my super technical know-how of art by naming this next technique, smudge that shit around. From here on out, that's pretty much all you're gonna be doing is taking the Borodante Air and smudging all over the place to give the cloud a nice puffy effect, and it really increases the amount of realism because let's just face it, clouds don't have any sharp angles or edges in nature. The Borodante Air Brush is a wet painting brush, so that means that it will smudge colors even in a gradation in a natural way, much like traditional media would. So you can go ahead and smudge between gradients and it will give a nice effect. But if you wanna select more specifically any colors that are around, like say you wanna bring even like a highlight from the top into a shadowy area, all you have to do is take your cursor and click and hold in Art Studio and it will bring up your color picker and it'll immediately select the color that's underneath your stylus and then you can drag that into whatever area you want to and it'll still smudge nicely and you can go ahead and move the colors wherever you want to or if you just wanna push lightly the entire time, you can smudge around whatever colors are in that particular area. And once you've smudged enough, I would recommend adding a couple of extra little clouds to the side just if you believe in the magic of friendship. And once you've done that, you're pretty much done. You can go ahead and zoom out and admire the work you've just completed. You've successfully stolen the colors from a photo and you are now a fraud, so congratulations. To be honest, it's not cheating at all to copy colors from a palette or from a photograph. It's really not. It's a good technique to learn and it's a good technique to try to copy a photo that you're seeing. Artists do it all the time, and it's very helpful for your growth as an artist, whether it comes to learning how to mix colors, learning how color composition works, learning how colors in nature work, how saturation works. Really, it's a great thing to do, and as long as you're not overtly saying like, I never copy colors, but here's my work where I've copied all these colors, I think you're gonna be fine. And now that you've completed this tutorial, you can go ahead and go crazy with all sorts of cloud shapes. You can even experiment with colors, but with similar rendering. You can make green clouds, purple clouds, I don't care. But now you know how to blend a cloud, make it look all puffy and fat and nice. And this technique will carry on into hopefully future pieces of yours. And if you're proud of any of your cloud tutorials, if you use this tutorial, if it was useful for you, go ahead and tag me at Kage Bonito on either Twitter or Instagram, and I would love to see what you've come up with.
Anyway, I hope this tutorial was useful for you. And if you did not get enough of my face on this platform, you can always go over and see me Monday through Friday, starting at 11 a.m. Pacific over on twitch.tv slash Kage Bonito. I am also on Patreon at Kage Bonito. Speaking of which, thank you so much to my patrons who have been helping me out this whole time and keeping me, keeping this artist afloat. It really means a lot. So thank you so much for all your contributions. And if you'd like to contribute, please go to patreon.com slash Kage Bonito and get some goodies over there, such as exclusive things like uh, PSDs, high-res photos, things like that. I also have a Redbubble linked below if you want some sick merch. And my commissions are open if anybody is interested in anything like that. You can go over to kagebonito.com, also linked below. Go to the contact page and hit me up through there. And if you like this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and a subscribe, because algorithm, I guess. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. All right? Peace.